I'm Eric, this is my nephew Kay. We've got the Earthquake Victory model 33970 rear tine tiller. And I'm gonna talk about it here, just kind of do an overview. And then I'm going to uh, talk to Caden and show him and thus show you how to do a pre-check before you start running the thing. Then we're gonna take it around to the garden and go through the startup procedure, which is pretty simple. And then we're going to till a couple rows in the garden. When I got my tiller, I bought it from the store already assembled. I guess most people when they get them, they get them in a kit and a box and it comes with some pretty detailed instructions on how to completely assemble the thing from the box. I did not have to worry about that, but what I did do was follow the assembly instructions or at least kind of skim through them. And as I skimmed through them, I checked all the different components as if I were trying to put it together myself. And then I went through and I, by hand, checked all the different nuts and bolts and everything to make sure everything was uh, tight and seemed to be in good in good order. I found that the wheels, there is actually a forward and a backward and a left and a right on each wheel according to the assembly instructions and the illustrations. I did find that the wheels were on the wrong sides. I don't know how much of a difference that actually makes. Probably not much. I'm kind of anal retentive, so I swapped them around and put them on the right sides. These cables, they were not attached other than kind of at their end points but they were just kind of sticking out and provided something for things to snag on and I didn't want that. I just zip tied them against the uh, handles here. Um, you don't wanna zip them down super snug. I, they have to be able to move. I just wanted them out of the way so that they're not gonna get caught on anything. This wire over here, yada yada. So just kind of do a good once over, make sure everything's put together. I did have a bunch of loose stuff and I did have to tighten a bunch of bolts. So if you get yours pre-assembled, check it all out. All right, so we'll kind of do a tour of the thing. Alrighty. So you're over here from the driver's side. This lever here, this is going to be your drive. I see. And so you hold that down like a lawnmower and that's going to make it work okay. and go forward. If you ever want to stop motion, and when I say stop motion, I mean the wheels stop spinning and the blades stop spinning. You just let go of that, okay? So pretty much like a lawnmower. Yep, like a lawnmower. You just let go. The things that spin stop spinning. The motor stays running. You have your on-off switch here, which we will get to in a minute. Alrighty. And then on the right side, this is your reverse. So in order to reverse it, what you'll do is you'll lift that up with that hand, and then with this hand, you'll pull this back and the wheels will actually start to roll backward, so then you'll have to walk back. I see. The blades will still spin, but they'll spin very slowly in the opposite direction. Okay. Underneath here, you see that stake right there? Mm -hmm. This is your drag stake. Mm -hmm. That adjusts how, that determines how deep or shallow the blades are going to dig into the ground. So if you pull that cotter pin off of there, uh. Like this? Yep, pull that out. Just yank it out of there. You might kind of lift up on the handlebar. This? Yep, there you go. And then this will slide up and down. Okay. So if you have this all the way up, the drag stake is higher, which means obviously that the blade is going to sink deeper in the ground. I see. Go ahead and put that back in there. You might have to look at the holes and lift that up and try to get it lined up right. There, there you go. go. Yep. And like that. Yep, that's that. So that's your drag stake and your depth adjustment. On the wheels here, you'll notice that when you pulled it out of the garage, it kind of rolled pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Now, come here, I'll show you something. On the wheels, you'll see how this axle mm -hmm. right here has a hole that the cotter pin's going through. And then you'll notice that the, the, the rim has a hole here. So, Right now, that's why it rolls so freely, because it's in freewheel mode. When we get moved over to the garden and we actually want to start running this thing, if we start it up right now, the wheels aren't going to move. This would just spin around inside there, but the wheels ain't going nowhere because its cotter pins aren't lined up. Right. So when we get over there, we'll have to line up these holes with these holes and then put the pin through it. Okay. Up here from the driver's side again, if you look down in the center here, you have this it looks like it might be a little dipstick. It's just a plug, really. Well, it is kind of a dipstick. And it doesn't screw or anything, it just pulls out. It's just 
rubber on rubber, and that's uh, where the grease goes for the drive and the, the axle. But we really don't have to worry about checking this. If you assemble yours, you're gonna have to put grease in there, but mine came pre-assembled, so it was already greased up. And you, that's really a check you only need to do like once a year. I see. On the right side of the engine over here, you got this orange plug. This plug is where the engine oil goes. This is where you would fill your engine oil. And when you fill your engine oil, you see how the engine oil looks like it's dripping out here. It's uh -huh. all the way up to the threads, the, the last thread closest to us. Yeah. When you fill up your engine oil, that's how full you want to fill it. So you fill it up until it just starts to come out. I've seen videos where guys will tip this thing on its side and remove this plug and then fill it up. You don't want to do that. You want because then you'll have it over full, um, which can cause damage to the engine. You want it sitting level on level ground like this. You take out your plug and then you fill the oil. On the opposite side, you have another plug. It looks pretty much identical. The only difference is, is this is actually the dipstick on there. Did you see that oil pour out of there? Yeah. That's, I've got plenty of oil in there. So it's one reservoir, it's just it has a plug on one side, a dipstick on the other. You can fill it from either side. And then on the top, you have your gas tank. You'll see that little red thing in the top there. And you'll see that the, the fuel level is, flow, is hovering right there. That's as full as you want to fill it. And that is it as far as fluids really. While it's in free wheel mode, Dane's going to show you how to move this thing and we're just gonna go around to the uh, garden with it, okay? Okay. okay. So, so you just lift it up. Yep, and then you just pull it. Yep, you could just get the uh, tines or the blades called tines, just get them up off the ground and you can pull it along or you can turn around and push it if you want. That's usually how I do it. I never thought about pushing it. Come on. <laughs> Not the tallest person. <laughs> so we're doing about four foot spacing between the rows. Three, four, that's gonna be the center of my row. All right, so now we'll go through the startup procedure. So you've checked everything out, you've done your pre-inspection. Before you actually start to start it, we're going to put the wheels into the drive position. Okay. All right, so you're gonna remove your cotter pin like so, and you got the hole in your wheel, the hole in your uh, axle, and you gotta grab it, pull the wheel out, manhandle it till your holes line up. Can you see they're lined up? And then put your pin in. and lock it in place. So. Oh. Yeah, don't go too far. <laughs> we got turn it. Yep, there it is. Like that. Come on. There we go. Yep, there it is. All right, so now you got your wheels in, in drive. You're gonna switch your switch to on. Over here on the front, you've got three switches or levers. This top one is the throttle. You can tell it's a throttle because it's got high speed, which is a rabbit, low speed, which is a turtle. Right now it's a, and this is the switch. It's all the way on slow speed. Uh, whoever put the sticker on here didn't really line it up that great. The next one, this middle one is the choke. All the way to the left is choke. All the way to the right is run. We're gonna put it on choke. And then the bottom one is the fuel. So you're gonna switch your fuel. Left is off, all the way to the right is on. You're gonna switch the fuel all the way on. You're gonna double check your choke and make sure it's all the way to the left on full choke. Yep. yep. And then you're going to adjust your throttle so that it's at the halfway point between low and high. Yep. About there. Yep, just go all the way till it feels like it's one, at one end, go all the way so it feels like it's on the other and then find kind of what's in the middle there. It's kind of yep. a hard thing to move. Yeah. Just, I'd say it's, like about here. Yep, so if that's about halfway, 
I'd say that's about half. All right, so then what we're gonna do, you're going to pull the pull start. Now you're gonna do it slowly at first. You're gonna pull it out all the way until you feel a little bit of resistance. Okay. Right there. Yep, let it go back in, go back out, take out some of this like Now get one good tug. All right, now right there. Once you get it going, you're gonna let it kind of idle for a few seconds. The next thing you're gonna do is your choke. You're gonna slowly move it up to full run position. All the way. Okay, now once it's running, you're gonna let it idle for about 30 seconds or so, so we'll let it kind of warm up. Okay. While it's warming up, we're gonna adjust the uh, drag stake. If you have it all the way down like it is, it's barely gonna just scratch the surface and not really do any good. You wanna pull the pin, lift the stake up, maybe two holes, and then put it back in. Lift it up. Yeah, just the stake. We'll start off right about, eh, yeah, about right there. All right, it's been kind of warming up, so now you want to take your throttle and put your throttle all the way up to high. This one? Yep. All the way. All right. Start to go forward. Grab the, the wheels are going to turn forward to pull you and the tines are gonna spin backward to dig in the ground. So they're gonna be going like this. Okay. And then if I wanna back up, I'm gonna lift it here and then back up. I'm going to readjust the depth on this because that's a little bit deep for the first pass. Okay. You ready? Yep. So all I do is just pull this back? Yep. Go ahead. It's going to start moving. Okay, slow down. Stop. You feel how it pulls? Yeah. So kind of just hold on to it and give the, give the time kind of dig and then let it go forward, let it go forward, so you're holding on to it. That's the initial first pass. And we have pretty hard ground here. Um, as you can see on the first pass, what we're trying to do is just get up these uh, kind of the big chunks of grass and root. And that's really all we're doing there. So we'll go through this a couple of times, a few passes. And each time we'll lift 
will raise that drag stake so that the tines go deeper and deeper. So after that initial pass, that not very deep till, we're just going through and pulling all this crap out. Yep, by hand, it may seem like a lot of extra work, but if I can take all this stuff out now and keep it from rerouting right in the row where we want our plants to be, I figure more work now, less work later. Hey, Kane, come over here. I want you to kind of put your hand on the handle and feel what's happening as I do this. Because um, you're going to feel it's going a lot deeper. It's like it doesn't really want to go forward. All right, hold, hold on to it. See, I'm not holding it back. It's just stuck in place. And all I'm going to do is just kind of bounce it a little to let it move. And I'm going to let it dig. And then bounce it to let it move and dig. Yeah, dang, you can really tell the difference. And if it kind of goes like it's tilting one way or the other, just manhandle it and dig into the opposite side that it's tilting. You know I what see. I mean? Yeah. You kind of push down a little if you want to dig more. Kind of let it bounce. And you don't have to do it hard either because it's so heavy. You just got to move it. You don't have to. Yeah. You want to do some more into a deep? Uh, sure. Now if you're going along and it feels like it snags, like it hits a big rock or a big root, and it feels like it gets stuck, just let go. And then we'll back up out of it, okay? All right. Don't go too fast, we want to dig down deep. All right. See, it's tilting, manhandle it the other way, there you go. Just kind of go back and forth, try to keep it level, but deep. Tilt this way. Right on. Oh man, that's, think? that's a workout. You think that's so? All I'm gonna say, yeah. That thing, that thing's hard to move. How old are you now? Uh, 16. 16, so easy a, a LGBTQIA plus 16 year old oh could God. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. That went pretty deep. I'll show you how to turn it around on this end. It's just like doing a three point turn in a car. Let the tines out, go in reverse and turn. Tines up, go forward, turn. We got a row here, it's nice and deep. It's not the straightest, but it's all right. It'll work, it'll get the job done. We're gonna do, this should be good and ready for some planting. When we get ready to wheel this sucker back to storage, you wanna make sure to take these pins out, push the wheel back off, put the pins back in the axle so that your wheels are in free wheel mode. That's it. Got any questions, let me know in the comments. Let me know your experiences if you got these things. Um, what does it cost? Well, it's, they're kind of pricey. Uh, they are almost double what they were about two years ago. So I'll just say that. I will leave a link in the description if you would like to buy one. It saves a ton of work. This is worth the money. Okay, later.